Welcome and hello. I'm Carol Ingram and I'm one of the design team for Sulky of America. And today I'd like to bring you a really cool project that's a little on the artsy side, but it's so much fun and I wanted to share that fun with you and some of the techniques that it took to put it together. You will see that in our updated supplement to our stabilizer book. The, uh, the fiber art piece that I have here on the uh, table with me is going to be featured in that supplement book. Uh, I'd like to start today by talking about a stabilizer that is uh, normally used for uh, embroidery. It is a cutaway stabilizer. It's a medium weight and it uh, is designed to be permanently placed inside the embroidery. It does take dye very, very well. I have discovered and it's, it stands out very well to a multitude of paints and painting and art techniques. So I've developed a way uh, to color it, dye it, and make background pieces and applique pieces with it. It comes in rolls, eight inch rolls. It comes in packages of one yard and it also comes on the boat like we have up front for our larger projects. So if you get involved with this, I, I uh, recommend that you purchase enough that you can have some fun with it. I love the way that it's stored in this clamshell package. It has all the instructions uh, on the inside. It keeps it nice and clean so that you don't uh, get it dirty. And it, it stores very well because it has a little hanger on the top that you can hang it and you can see uh, how much you have left. Um, I'm also going to use another stabilizer today that's called Totally Stable. Totally Stable is a paper tearaway stabilizer and it has an adhesive side and that side of the stabilizer is shiny and slick and it also comes in the rolls and as you can see, you can see the shine to the one side. That's where the adhesive is. On the other side is very soft and fabric like. So when you iron it down on whatever your project is, you need to remember that the slick side sticks. It also has all the directions on the inside. It rolls right back up and goes into your clamshell for easy storage and keeping it clean. So today I'd like to start talking about the way that I dye the stabilizer. The cutaway is solid white or black and so it takes water very well and what I like to do is I like to cover my work surface and as you can see I have my table covered today with an old vinyl tablecloth that has a felt backing and uh, when we get done with them at picnics and whatever I never throw them away because I use them for protection with all my dyeing projects. I start with water and uh, my paints. As you can see I have a variety of paints. Uh, the cutaway stabilizer takes paint, it takes dye, uh, it takes any kind of uh, ink. So whatever the product is that is your choice that gives you the result that you want, that's the one that I recommend that you buy. I like one that I can mix with water. That way I have an easier cleanup. I, I usually start by spraying my surface and then I use this sponge and I run the water all over everywhere onto the uh, stabilizer. I let it set for a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes, and it soaks all the way through so that the entire stabilizer is wet. Once I have the wet stabilizer, then, and I have the paint spread onto it, and this, as you can see, is a paint like so, or an ink like so and I have different colors. And what I've done is, is sometimes I take the spray bottle after it's wet and I have my paint and ink on there, spray it again and it'll start running and it'll bleed into each other. At this point, with this particular water technique, I like to use margarita salt. And with the margarita salt, while it's still wet, I sprinkle the margarita salt onto the wet ink or the wet paint it has to be pretty liquid. You can't have really thick paint. Uh, and when you let it set, eventually the margarita salt will cause it to disperse and you get all of this beautiful texturizing. And you can see what a beautiful job. Now, I run my finger right here and you can see that there's still some margarita salt that's embedded into the ink right here, which gives it further texture and I love. That's what I'm after. I'm trying to do layer upon layer of texture. 
I like to use containers like so, plastic bowls, plastic um, plates with a rim on it, or even jars with lids so that I can store my paint in case I have a color that I end up liking and I want to use it again. I have all sizes in the sponge brushes. They are wonderful to use. Uh, once I've dyed whatever I have, you can see that I have several here that are in different color combinations. Once I have, you can see here where the water ran. And this is where it, uh, it kind of pooled in one spot. And sometimes I do this out on my deck or on my screen porch, and I just let it lay there and pool how it wants to because I like the way that it's flowing, and I like the way that the margarita salt is reacting to it, so I just leave it and let it dry overnight, and then I come up with a nice, beautiful piece of fabric, hand-dyed, of my choice so that I can make appliques. You can turn it over, and you can see that this is really the original side where the pooling was and it made all these little river forms. And this is so much fun that you can just really just get inside it and involved with that. But then we want to go one step further. You know, I'm one of those people that say, if a little will go, a whole lot will do better. So I, I have to try one or two more things. This is another color combination and this has no margarita salt on it. So you can see the variations where the margarita salt causes it to disperse. This was heavily wet so that the paint would pool. This was not as wet and the paint just dispersed mildly. Uh, so let me get down to this one. This piece right here, I, li I just liked it. When I started with the blues and the greens and it was so cosmic looking and kind of like uh, planetary and so I thought, this is just so great. I don't need to really destroy it with uh, margarita salt because I had another thing in mind. I have some other techniques that I just really think are cool. So this is the other side. And as you can see, there's a grid pattern right here. You can see the little, the little grid pattern that comes. And I did this grid pattern with a rubbing. And this is just a piece of, of uh, canvas that comes from uh, like a uh, handwork and you can buy this in the craft stores and uh, you can make tree ornaments or whatever but I use it for other things. I like to use an oil paint stick and I like to use it as a rubbing. I put it underneath and if you rub on top of it with your paint stick you can see that it gives you the impression of the grid underneath and so you can get that third dimension on top of your already painted dyed cutaway and you can go into gold metallics you can go into doing gold leafing the gold leafing on top of this grid makes an unusually bumpy surface you can go into stencils and stamps like so which makes it fun also I like to you can see that I've used this one a lot because this is one of my favorite ones but I also like to use other things for rubbings. Like I had this piece of tile that I bought at the home hardware store and it has a raised surface. And it kind of reminded me of, there's people that go around and do 